Welcome to Sagittarius New Moon webinar. This is a cyclic project where we meet every month, bringing our group focus to one of the 17 sustainable development goals using astrological potency of the current month to strengthen the thought form of each goal, knowing that energy follows thought and that the thought form of sustainable development goals will inspire millions of service everywhere in the world, all the groups that work to manifest it in practical service and all the governments of the world that signed under the UN Declaration of Sustainable Development Goals. So this month we are working with the energy of Sagittarius. We bring our focus to goal number four on education. And this time of the year, it's, it's a special season of holidays and festivals with many traditions coming together to celebrate the incoming light as the shortest days on the Northern Hemisphere and the longest days in the Southern Hemisphere bring everyone's attention to light as it comes to earth. And with this, I invite Daniela um, from Brussels to say hello and uh, to say a few words to us and sound the invocation for the United Nations. Well, hello everyone. And uh, just before I go into um, the reading. I would just like want to say to everyone that today is the um, day of Saint Nicholas in um, Christian Orthodox tradition, and it's a very very big celebration in Serbia, um, where he is considered to be a protector of children and travelers. And uh, aren't we all <laughs> children on our tra traveling back home? So happy, happy San Nicola today. <laughs> we need slide four. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So here it is. Invocation for the United Nations. May the peace and the blessings of the Holy Ones pour faith over the world rest upon the United Nations, on the work and the workers, protecting, purifying, energizing, and strengthening. There is a peace that passes understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the internal. There is a power that makes all things new, it lives and moves in those who know the self as one. Alexander, would you want to continue? Yes. May the rhythm of that peace vibrate within the United Nations and in the heart of every worker. May the rhythm of that creative power resound within the United Nations and in lives of all who serve there, awakening, transmuting, and giving birth to that which ought to be. May the chalice the United Nations is building become a focal point for descent of spiritual force, which feeling it and overflowing to the world draws toward itself and all those whose work lies there. 
Marta, would you continue? Marta is on mute. I forgot to unmute myself. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, and now I need to, oh, there we go. Thank you. May the consciousness of the United Nations become ever more one. The many lights, one light in the light of the self. May the aspiration and the dedication of the United Nations burn as a clear flame in the service of humanity and the holy ones. May the love and the light and the life of the one life pour through the United Nations, cleansing it from all evil and attracting all good. Good morning, everyone, and afternoon and evening. In this time of the new moon in Sagittarius, the work of Sagittarius, the work of direction toward group initiation via the love of the Christ is sealed. There is no true direction apart from thought. And I would have you remember, says DK in, in Esoteric Astrology, page 191, the thought is power. This is a statement upon which all disciples should ponder. For they can achieve no real comprehension of the direction of God's plan unless they work with a phase in their own lives which is subject to their own mental direction. Then and only then can they understand. Unquote. As a young girl in religion class, we were taught God is love, love is goodness, and goodness shares itself. Humanity achieves expression in the work, work of goodness sharing itself when it collectively agrees to pursue a way forward together. We find such an opportunity in the Sustainable Development Goals. As we humans journey into the solar light of Christ, we at the same instant turn back to face our beloved humanity in service to the path of the plan. Thomas Aquinas spoke long ago that humanity to elevate must have its minimal physical needs met first in order that each human can shift its attention away from survivor only and into higher levels of consciousness, the plan of God itself. This step forward brings humankind into the sixth root race and is already achieved by some. The means of turning to face humanity requires not only the sacrifice of the bodhisattva, but the exercise of straight thinking which activates our effectiveness in service to the elevation of humanity. Doug Hammarskjöld, former secretary of the United Nations, wrote long ago, the road to holiness necessarily passes through the world of action. In 2015, humanity received the opportunity to move forward toward group initiation when the 17 sustainable development goals with 169 targets were passed by consensus in the General Assembly. Prior to this passage, over 30 year journey of negotiations, resolutions, world conferences, the Millennium Development Campaign, and so many other campaigns went into the making of this great time. Today, we will discuss one of these goals, goal four, with two of the targets rather than all seven. 
But let us first turn to Sharon Deep, esoteric astrologer, who will provide some insight to guide our further discussion. Uh, Sharon, please unmute yourself. Now we should hear you. Sharon? Okay. Yeah. Yes, thanks, Sasha. And um, thank you, Martha. I just wanted to, um, as I'm looking up, uh, I wanted to look over um, across for just a second uh, to you, Martha, uh, because from just listening to your um, introduction, I just wanted to point out to uh, those on the line of um, real quickly of your tremendous service at the UN for um, more than 20 years. And, and I can hear it in, even in your introduction as to how much you love the UN and your dedication. And uh, so I just wanted to recognize uh, you in that regard. And so let's look up at the other bright lights um, in the sky. And we know that um, we're working within the Sagittarius new moon. The sun and moon are conjoining. And uh, they're also with Venus and Saturn. So it is as if we're at a new beginning, as we are to some degree at every new moon. But this time around in Sagittarius, we see the goal and we'll reach that goal. It's almost too easy uh, to imagine us standing together at that little gate that we're told Sagittarius is the little gate. So we're standing together at that little gate and we're looking toward the mountaintop of Capricorn with our sun entering Capricorn on uh, Thursday morning, the exact time of the, of the solstice, uh, 11, 29, um, Eastern Standard Time anyway. Um, but anyway, how interesting it is that Venus and Saturn, the two planetary rulers of Capricorn, are close by, uh, conjoining our, the energies of our Sagittarius new moon. And it is as if we can almost hear Saturn, the teacher, as it too is shifting into Capricorn around midnight tonight, actually, um, on the East Coast, telling us you will need structure and discipline in order to be able to climb to the top of that mountain you're aiming at. While Venus, the star of the mother of the world, always calling us to higher levels of the mind to where the soul resides and beyond bringing us the science of mind, the science of the soul. And Venus can be heard calling us to press forward. It's a special time for all of us to be here together. We see the goals, we see the top of the mountain, a life of dignity for all. And as if we're being guided to be on our way soon, step by step by Venus, the star of the mother of the world, and Saturn, the teacher. All of these energies, the sun, moon, Venus, Saturn, all in Sagittarius at the time of the new moon, are harmonizing with Uranus, retrograding in Aries, inclining us on inner levels, individually and perhaps within the group of all world servers, to dedicate ourselves to the sudden and somewhat shocking urge to try to really make things better. And at the same time, all of these energies, these very same energies, Sun, Moon, Venus, Saturn, all in Sagittarius at the time of the new moon, are challenging Chiron and Pisces, which I always hear whispering to us. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. So we are the ones that we've been waiting for to not only see the goal, but to have the structure and discipline being taught by Saturn 
in order to have the ability to respond, the responsibility to hear that call from the mother of the world, or Venus. So how fitting it seems then for us to be gathered here today to work together and focusing the light of our structured and disciplined group mind, Saturn, on the UN development goal of quality education for all, promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. It's a Venus calling. Seems auspicious to me, the way it all fits together. So, um, so maybe Martha, I'm gonna uh, maybe stop here and um, within uh, this light, uh, let you introduce the body of the goal and the targets. Is that okay? Yes, Sharon, thank you. Um, there is a script that's a little longer <clears throat> on the uh, shared site that have more of Sharon's insights. And for now, appreciating Sharon's contribution, let us hold our attention on the conjunct of Venus, Saturn, and Uranus. Venus is certainly at work in the expression of goal four. Saturn is the one who will bring the strength and direction toward our own individual implementations of that. Uranus is the turbulent underminer, I think, so much uh, characteristic of what we'll talk a little bit later in the body of this talk on uh, disruptive technology, actually. So in looking at this from the standpoint of the meditation, I would like us to hear some of Sharon's closing words that she shortened for us. Let us carry these thoughts forward from the rapidly forming group created from all world servers to the great ones who look over and guide our planetary evolution. The ageless wisdom affirms that the full expression of ashram energy will be directed to practical world affairs and to the education of the general public. So let us move forward together toward an inner subjective focusing toward such a light within subtle realms to strengthen the thought form of solution in achieving the development goal of quality education. This seems relevant to in turn acknowledge Sharon, who is the co-convener of what is known as the Spiritual Caucus at the United Nations, who honors in their meetings <clears throat> the uh, wisdom of Doug Hammarskjöld, who said there is in each of us a place of stillness wrapped in silence. And it will be in our touching that place in ourselves that the great mission of the UN will be achieved. So I thank you in turn for your work as well, Sharon. So as said before, throughout the long march to September 20, 2015, when the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda was activated, Education always played a vital role as one of the goals. Goal four is especially expansive in that it considers topics ranging from agriculture to finance. When we read this goal with just two of the targets, we notice some important inclusions that were not present initially. Groups such as indigenous people, disabled and other not marginalized persons are now named as a means of mainstreaming their contributions as is their rightful place into the work of quality education and lifelong learning opportunities. We might also include migrants, refugees and trafficked persons in the list. 
While the goal provides food for much thought, it may be well here to focus on just a few highlights in order to preserve the focus upon meditation. Let us look together at how the goal first reads before we move to the targets. First, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Here we note the shift from packaged institutional learning as we know it today to the expansion of opportunities that empower all toward engagement in service according to their ability. We observe the trending away from imparting knowledge to the building of competencies relevant to the future, a helpmate to both the individual contributing and to the collective good to which the new group of world servers dedicate themselves. Lifelong learning opportunities indicates that global citizenship education is a community affair where skills are shared. We turn toward whoever's teaching us in the moment, whether that be a child, whether it be someone who <clears throat> maybe cannot speak clearly because they're disabled, but one whom we recognize, is, recognize as knowing who is able best in this moment to perform the task and to guide us into helping them. We can live now in a world that ends a pass-fail mindset. Rather, failure becomes part of the learning opportunity. We are familiar with DK's observation, there is no failure in defeat. We are the ones we've been waiting for. With regard to emerging trends, the general view of economists is that as new technologies arise, old technologies are replaced. This phenomenon called disruptive technology not only brings major change to the job market, but even to the process of thinking itself. Global citizenship education creates opportunities needed to close the gap between the negative impact of such disruptive technologies to mitigate the challenges for those who have already been left behind, to include, to heighten, to make aware, to change. Such global citizenship education reverses the growing trend of winners and losing, losers. Without losing our national, religious, and ethnic identities, we will learn to incorporate them into the greater unification of one civilization. Even the use of language will change toward much greater care and sensitivity to cultures other than ours. Yesterday, I was with my granddaughter, for example, and we were talking about Asian pears. And as she knows Japanese, she is the daughter of a first-generation Japanese person, American. She observed that it's strange to call this particular pair an Asian pair. She thought, she said to herself, she said to us, well, what do the Asians call the Asian pair here? She said, wouldn't they call it nasia, which she said is the Japanese word for pear. It brought to mind how my use of the word Asian pear was in some way othering the pear. So we laughed and chatted about it and, and said, well, let's call the Asian pear by its name. Let's call it Nasha pear. These very, very small stories illustrate where the world is trending in the future. It may be interesting to know, too, the Canadian government's foresight organization, Policy Horizons Canada, has brought out two very important reports, Metascan 2, Building Resilience in a Digital Economy and Network Society, and Metascan 3, Emerging Technology.
pathologies. In the Metascan 3 report, it identified the most disruptive technologies for the next 15 years. This, by the way, is in a reference on the panel that Alex has put kindly put up and very thoughtfully and patiently. Um, this, I think it's called no Negotiating the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, written by Felix Dodds, David Donahue, and Humane Leva Resch. Without going into too much detail as to which jobs will be lost and which ones will emerge, we may note that the teaching profession as we know it will be reduced from the use of learning specialists to be replaced with coaches, course designers, learning camps, and I want to add those who know the best in the moment what is called for. How many of us are learning from children the use of technology, for example? These goals all of them, all of the sustainable goals, are designed with awareness of such shifts and make note of how thinking itself must change from nationalistic perspectives to more global ones. As we know, energy follows thought, contemplating all of the goals in depth offers some insight about the shaping of more inclusive thinking in line with these future trends. Within goal four, there are two targets in particular, and forgive me for not going through all of the targets because this is such a rich uh, goal. We can go on and build upon it at another time. Two targets in particular demonstrate the developing thought from the inception of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1951 to the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. Target 4.5 reads, by 2030, eliminate gender disparities in education and ensure equal access to all levels of education and vocational training for the vulnerable, including persons with disabilities, indigenous people, and children in vulnerable situations. These people are not inherently, as we know, in any way less able to take leadership in terms of creating a new world. It is we who have marginalized them. Education may be the key element that restores to all humans their inherent subjectivity. It may be seen that failure to grant dignity occurs through marginalization and objectification. This goal reverses that. It spells out more clearly than ever before each individual's potential to participate in the greater good of all. When competency rather than economic status is emphasized in the context of lifelong learning, we take one step closer to the fifth kingdom. Turning to goal four, target seven, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and the appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Interestingly enough, that is all one sentence. In this long, long sentence, let's try to break it down into smaller parts. Here it may be seen that education is directed toward what we may see as human purpose to be in right relationship with Earth through sustainable lifestyle, human rights, and gender equality. Further, right relationship with all humans is seen to be a collective step when we learn to identify with what is required to establish the culture of peace and nonviolence. 
Culture of peace as a term did not exist at the time of the writing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Rather, the term arose in civil society and was quickly taken up by UNESCO. In 1999, 13 September, the General Assembly passed by consensus the Declaration and Program of Action on the Culture of Peace, a forerunner document to these SDGs. This term was included in the SDGs as a spiritual effort because the efforts of civil society to speak this new language is a key element in the transition of our very consciousness. Let us turn to co-panelists now, Sharon Deep, whom you've heard from, and Iris Spellings, who has also been at the United Nations working tirelessly to uplift the, the culture of peace. Uh, for further insights and information upon the goal. We'll have a short discussion. Then uh, when the time is right, uh, Alex will tell us about, uh, we will offer the platform to any questions and we will move into the new moon meditation. Alex, I did want to ask you, um, how, how much time do Iris and Sharon and I have for this portion? How much time would you like us to take? About five minutes, were you thinking? Or? Five minutes, I think, would be good, yes. Okay, good. So I invite Iris and Sharon to comment on anything that they've heard, their own insights about goal four, uh, hopefully uh, informing those who have joined us for this panel. Hello, this is Iris. And thank you. I want to thank Martha and uh, Sharon for inviting me to participate in this discussion and Alexander um, on goal four. Um, I think Martha's, um, I also want to emphasize Martha's uh, point about uh, global citizenship, education for global citizenship. I think that's one of the uh, most important things that um, in the world today because it helps people understand our oneness and um, it's it's at the root of all the SDGs. I was really impressed as I was doing some research for this meeting. Um, I found a booklet it's um it's called laying the foundation to measure sustainable development goal four and it's produced by the united nations and uis which is unesco institute for statistics and as with all the goals part of the targets are being able to making sure we're able to reach them all by 2030. So it's just amazing the complexity of all these goals and trying to set up some kind of measurement. I mean, when you think about education, you think about students at Harvard, you think about students um, sitting on carpets in Thailand under thatched roofs, you think about people in Africa sitting on blankets in the desert I'm, and trying to measure <laughs> this. Um, it's quite astounding, but, but their aim is, um, is it changing conditions on the ground because we, we know certain things work. And so we want to share those things that might be applied in different locations. And also, um, this means this means providing opportunities for all to acquire and apply the knowledge and skills that empower everyone to reach their potential and strengthen their societies and economies. So there's two pillars to this. One is um, a strong focus on uh, monitoring and improving learning outcomes. And then the other is, is making sure it focuses on those who are left behind and often remain hidden. Um, if I could go on just for another uh, 
couple minutes, I would. Um, please, yeah, please do, Iris. Okay. And Sharon, you jump in if um, you want to say something, and I'll continue later. But um, with UNESCO, I education with UNESCO has created these uh, flashes we last new moon for the sustainable development goals. So I was, uh, and they're available, I think, on their website if anyone's interested. They're, it's called a training for multipliers. It's, it's like we've we've gotten them, so now we're sharing with you, and you can get these cards, and you can share with people in your community about the goals. But on goal four, quality education, there are several points, key points, and Martha, you've talked, you've touched on some of these. One, of course, is gender roles, and especially in, uh, uh, well, all over the world, it's changed, um, changing significantly with more women gaining higher degrees. And that gives everyone, giving everyone access to quality education is the prerequisite for participatory governance, collective intelligence, and wise action. And then um, the other one, and you also touched on this, Martha, when you mentioned community, um, sustainable development can be catalyzed by design-centered education that promotes whole systems thinking and integrative locally adapted solutions, as well as the ability to collectively envision a positive future and co-create -cre adaptive strategies for how to bring it about collaboratively. And there are two more. Um, the other is, as you and you mentioned, I think this comes under the disruptive technology, how jobs are changing. And so in a rapidly changing world with humanity facing multiple converging crises, education has to remain flexible and lifelong so people can adapt to changing conditions job markets and the economic trends and innovations will change much more frequently than in the one career for life conditions of the baby boom generation. Qualitative economic growth crucially depends on enabling people to creatively solve the problems and to meet the needs of their local community. And then um, another one is the importance of ecological and social literacy. And that cannot be overestimated because the complex eco-social systems in which we participate can only be maintained and regenerated if we all become responsible citizens aiming for appropriate participation at local and at the local and regional scale. So education is as much about the why as the how and the what of regenerative cultures. We depend on the planetary life support system. Thank you, Iris. I'll stop here. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to re repeat your resource again. I think you said laying the foundation for the measurement of goal four put out by UNESCO's UIS is right. you, you also shared how to get a hold of this resource. It's not listed in the script, so it's very useful. Um, I actually listed two, two sources. One was the flashcards that, that UNESCO and Guy Education put out which were the facts at the end. And at the beginning, I mentioned it's a, it's a sustainable development data digest. And you might, I would imagine you'd be able to find it online. Um, it's called Laying the Foundation to Measure Sustainable Development Goal 4. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Sharon, did you want to add anything? Well, let me see. I have a couple of things, but they're um, more of a... Um, uh, impressions that uh, I've had uh, from working at the UN and I just want to say them uh, quickly 
Uh, one is is that when the SDGs were being developed, you know, and and the way they were developed with the various countries really working, um, and the fact that Ban Ki Moon asked uh, the grassroots or the we the peoples from all around the world what their major goals were or what their better world looked like. And I'll never forget the feeling I had when I was going through the data of the of the survey and I and I recognized that all around the world the number one goal was education. So no matter how poor the people were or how polluted their water was or all the rest, it was education was the first thing that the people wanted. And I was just so struck by that. And I've been telling everybody about it ever since. And so I had to say it here. The second, the second thing that uh, I'm always struck by, um, and I hold very close to heart, and I'd like to share it, is that I feel as though uh, the, the world is at a uh, crossroads. And so when we talk about um, uh, unity and we talk about uh, global citizen, there's two ways of looking at that. And one way is very centralized and uh, you know, a world government or uh, something comes along and, and tells us what the standards are for to be a, a citizen of the world and tells us different things, um, kind of dictating it to us in a very centralized fashion. And in the other way, uh, is a very decentralized fashion. And it's definitely, uh, you know, community by community. Uh, and these goals are taken into uh, families and into a personal, uh, you know, held very personally all around the world as to what their better world looks like and they make it up, they create it. And in my mind, and I'm sure uh, in the minds of those that are on this line, that, that when we envision that, that becomes a much more beautiful and vital world than to have uh, a very centralized version. And here's something else I say, and Martha will, well, anyway, <laughs> is that I also see that corporations are coming into the United Nations. And I haven't been there as long as Iris and Martha. I've only been there a kind of a short time, really. But even in that short time, I've seen corporations coming into the United Nations and um, offering to help and saying that they would help achieve these goals. And um, so we want to kind of keep uh, all of that in the light uh, um, and visualize we the peoples rising, making this a real beautiful world. Anyway, thank you, Martha. Thank you, Sharon. Turning it back to Alex now. Uh, may I say something very quickly? Of course. I just Googled um, Sustainable Development Digest Goal 4 UNESCO, and there's a PDF. So if anyone interested in looking at that document. Iris, you can, if you could uh, copy paste it in the chat window here, that way you could share uh, that people okay. could put it on their screens. Um, we don't have much time left and the main uh, focus of our work is meditation and this wonderful sharing that I'm really grateful for three of you to offer to the community. Um, helped us to build the focus towards the meditation. But if anyone has any comments from the audience, very quick before we go into meditation, please use this time. For that, raise your hand and then we will unmute you. So I think we can take this moment of silence to prepare us for the meditation and Marta, please lead us in meditation.
So we will use the uh, new moon meditation outline that I believe Alex has posted. And let us say it together. Um, I love the picture of the sustainable development goals. I think we probably need the outline per se. Do we have that as a slide, Alex? Or shall I just go ahead without it? Let me let me do this together then. <clears throat> Group fusion. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Alignment. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. Let us mentally extend a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy, <clears throat> the planetary heart center, to the Christ, the heart of love within the hierarchy, towards Shambhala where the will of God is known. Higher interlude. Hold the mind focused for a few minutes on the planetary role of the new group of world servers mediating between hierarchy and humanity. Responding to hierarchical impression and meditating, mediating the plan, meditating the plan into existence. Reflect on the seed thought. Through the impression and expression of certain great ideas, humanity must be brought to the understanding of the fundamental ideals which will govern the new age. This is the major task of the new group of world servers. Precipitation. Visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet, from Shambhala through the planetary heart, the hierarchy, through the Christ, the new group of world servers, through all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. 
and finally, through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. Lower interlude. Consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working out in the world through members of the new group of world servers, so building the thought form of solution to world problems. distribution. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth. Could I call upon all of us to unmute ourselves and say this together, that we might hear one another? Unmuted. It technically will be difficult, but the panelists can. So I suggest we start the new uh, great invocation from the beginning uh, with the panelists unmuting themselves and sounding it together. From the point of light, light. within the, the mind, mind of God, let light, light stream, stream forth in, into the minds of men. Let, let light descend on earth. From the point, point of love, of love within, within the heart, the heart of God. Let the light stream forth into the hearts of men. men. May Christ return to earth. From the center, center where the will of God is known, let her purpose thus guide the little will of men. Men, the purpose, the purpose which, which the masters, masters know is from the center, center which we call race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out, work out and in me, seal the door. Yeah, you will. Let, let, let light and love 
and power. And power. And power. Restore, Restore and the plan earth. on earth. earth. Thank you very much for our joint work today. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Sharon and Iris. This time of year as we celebrate the light there are many opportunities for us come together in the group meditation connecting through space and our next webinar will be tomorrow uh, it's going to be solstice celebration with Antonella Nobilio from Italy who will present on behalf of the planetary system project on the topic of the 49 goals of the planetary plan. On December 31st, I, I invite you to join the New Year's Eve vigil organized by uh, the Moria Federation. Uh, the link will be sent uh, additionally to that. And the 2025 initiative will join this vigil um, bringing uh, as presenters the Hekal group from Jerusalem uh, who will continue the annual cycle of Capricorn alignment. So please join that and um, besides the Hekal group there will be many wonderful presenters uh, invited by Tu and Michael Robbins. So please tune to with their mailing list for more details on that. And uh, our monthly solar festival celebration um, this time on the sign of Capricorn will be on January 2nd and uh, our presenters will be Barbara Valakor and Steve Nation and they will bring the group focus to the topic of the power of invocation and evocation so please join this webinar and Let's stay connected. So let's end our work today sounding Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return. Unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty 
as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh.